Okay, so now we're going to describe how to mount the sample. So the first three steps uh, you can see are before putting on gloves, so we need to do them by hand. I'm reading off this. The other place where you can find these, which I find to be more comfortable than reading off uh, these sort of instructions that are here, is we've made a big version of these instructions uh, in a big font, so if you're in the room, you'll be able to see it very clearly. So you can stand next to the microscope and have both hands available to do the things that it says there. So the first step is to raise the zoom body all the way up using the focus knob. So the zoom body <clears throat> is this whole part of the microscope. And you move it up or down with this, and you can see that way is up. So you have to check that it's all the way up. That's where people should leave it, but you can see if it were a little bit lower, we turn this away from us, so towards the wall, it goes up. So it has to be all the way at the top. And don't force it. If, it, if you can't move it, that means it's all the way at the top. All right, what's the next step? So the next step, step number two, is to rotate the objective out of the working position. So you can see this is the objective here, right there. And this is the working position, sort of aligned on top of the reservoir. This is out of the working position. Uh, so it should be left out of the working position. The reason that step is there is just to remind you to look for it in case the last person forgot. You can rotate it in either direction, and it has kind of, it clicks into place when you get there or when you get there. Um, so I, I hope you can hear the click in the video, and when you rotate this by hand, you'll feel it definitely uh, very clearly. So the next step, number three, is to loosen the hex screw on the right side of the gray stage plate. So it's talking about this hex screw here. That should be left loose, uh, but the step uh, to check it is there because not everyone remembers to leave it loose. And so we need to make sure that that's loose because we will need to remove this eventually, and if it's tight, we won't be able to. The way we do it is this, this with this hex key right here, and you can see this is not something we're supposed to use with gloves. I'm going to insert it here, and I'm just gonna insert it and check whether it's loose. If you can rotate it, it's loose. If it feels firm, that means it's tight. You don't need to remove the screw or really like loosen it so you can see so much. It just needs to be loose. If it's loose, that's fine. Don't try removing that screw because that's a very small set screw. Uh, if that falls on the floor, it'll be really difficult to find. Um, so just loosen it, but don't remove it. All right. So now we have to put on gloves. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, and mount the camera in a way that you can see what I am doing. All right, so I'm going to need to put on gloves. The gloves are here. We have small, medium, and large. I will also need uh, a paper towel. So if there's not one in here, we can grab one of these absorbent ones from here. Uh, we'll be doing some work in there. So I'm gonna turn on the light again without gloves. And now I'm going to position this so you can see what I'm doing. So I've put on gloves, you can see here. And the first step uh, with gloves is to carefully lift off the gray stage plate. So we need to remove this part. Uh, when you do that, uh, sort of before you do that, make sure that there is a piece of, um, of absorbent paper here. If there is not, you can get one over here fold it and place it there. There should be, but if there's not, this is near the sink. Okay, so when we remove this gray stage plate, we want to be very careful because we don't want to, this is a piece of sort of aluminum, we don't want to lift this up and bang it against this. So what I always recommend to people is put one of your hands at the back, the other at the front, and lift from the front so that you pivot in a way that then you can slide this out. Do not grab it from the front and pivot like this because that will be very hard to control and you might slam into it and break an expensive piece of glass. So we're just gonna remove this and then we need somewhere to place it. We don't wanna place it here or here because there's a lot of sensitive optics underneath so we don't want to uh, knock them out of alignment. Instead, we're gonna place it on the air table to the right of the microscope. Okay, so the next step is we need to remove this lid. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to go into the hood and get a piece of absorbent paper. And when I remove the lid, I'm going to put it on the paper next to it. The reason is the bottom of the lid sometimes has traces of DBE, so we don't want them dripping all over the place. 
So here I have a piece of absorbent paper. I'm going to carefully lift the lid up and place it here and then take it back to the hood. Okay, so the next step is now that the lid is gone and you can see, I'm gonna take off one of the gloves so you can see, that's the reservoir with the DBE and you can see how full that is. Now we need to place the gray stage plate back onto the system. So this can be a little bit tricky. Uh, if you look carefully, the gray stage plate has four corners. Let me see if I can see that. Let's see. See them there? Those are the four corners. Those four corners need to go into the four corners of this square here. Um, so it can take a little bit of uh, kind of finagling this into place to make that happen. What I usually do is, again, I put one hand at the back to avoid slamming into that, and then just gently try to align um, those posts with the four corners. Uh, I'm going to put the, the camera in another location where you might be able to see that a little bit easier. So I'm going to show you how to do that again. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do that again. You can see those four pegs have to fit into the four corners here. So again, I bring this at an angle and then gently lower it into position. I hope that um, is a little bit easier to see uh, with this camera angle. So you see we've done the removal of the stage plate, we've removed the reservoir's black lid, those are steps five and six, and we've carefully replaced the gray stage plate, which is step seven. So step eight says mount sample in the correctly sized sample holder. Try to mount your sample as level and as near uh, the top of the holder as possible. So this is a little bit tricky um, because there are many options and they will all take place in here. Uh, so I will set up the camera in a way that you can see what I'm doing and we'll go over different options here. Okay, so let's talk about sample mounting. I've placed the camera on top of the fume hood so that you can see uh, the different options. So this system does not have any cover slips or slides. Instead, the sample is placed on one of these holders. We'll go over the different options in a moment, uh, where it is secured from the side by a screw. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is an example of a holder. And so you can see it has a base, two posts, and a little screw that goes in from the side and can secure a sample by pressing it against um, this other post. Uh, all of the sample holders have you know, some version of this, except some big ones that don't have the post and you need to glue samples down, but those are for specialized applications. So most of them have some sort of screw, some sort of base, and some columns on the side. Whichever one of those you pick, so these are some examples, you will then insert them into this, which we call the cradle. So this is um, kind of an oddly shaped thing where we will put, we will loosen this set screw here, then put the sample like this. And it's a good idea to put the sort of screws anti-parallel and then secure it from here once we have a sample in. The idea is if you look at this from the side, you see that there's nothing um, blocking the way of the light there. So we will put it into um, the microscope itself, either in this configuration or in this configuration. Um, the ideas are uh, that we have to follow when we put this in are the following. The light sheets will come either from the right or from the left. So we can't have these posts, posts in the middle. So we can't have something like this. In addition, we can't have these screws and these little posts in the middle. So it always has to be either like this or like that. There's another constraint. So, you know, you might ask, well, why not like this? Uh, the constraint is this doesn't actually fit in the light sheet like this. So we wouldn't want to put it that way because it would block it. We wouldn't want to put it this way because it doesn't fit. So we have to put it diagonally. Therefore, this has to be like that. 
And when we put it diagonally, we can either put it this way or that way. And it'll become clear once I put it on the light sheet how this all works together. But what we need to do then is put the sample in one of these holders, put the holder into the cradle, and then put the cradle into the light sheet. So what are our options for holders and which one should we use? So we have multiple options for both holders and screws. The holders that are black are the ones that came with the system. And you can see there are different models. There are ones that have a base and there are ones that don't have a base. For the ones that don't have a base, there are different spacings between the posts. You can see from small to large. These should only be used with the plastic screws. And we have two plastic screws that have sharp tips. So these two have sort of little triangular shapes on the, on the, on the, on the tip. And then we have another one that has a blunt tip. So which one is the best depends on your sample and that requires a little bit of consultation with us. Um, the other option are to use these sample holders, the ones that are white, which have been 3D printed, that's why they're a different color, and these should only be used with these screws, which are metal and they're all blunt. Um, so people that use uh, brains typically, or half brains typically use these uh, ones, uh, and for those people there are two versions that depend on whether the posts are a little bit closer together or a little bit farther apart. And there are some subtleties to how to position the brains with them. Uh, there are also sort of bigger, more custom ones that we've made. These require gluing things down. Uh, I'm not gonna go into that in this video. Those are custom applications that we can discuss if you need to. Um, the other thing here that's useful is we have these pedestals, which can be used in conjunction with the, the holders that have a hole inside to help you hold the sample while you screw it in uh, from the side. And finally, we have a number of tools here which can help you uh, mostly get samples out of their containers, uh, as well as uh, kind of a little, a little beaker where you can uh, pour liquid out uh, if you need to uh, get to the samples a little bit more easily. Uh, so sample mounting is a bit of an art. We've had experience with a lot of different kinds of samples. Uh, let me show you how to mount a particular sort of sample, but uh, for, for whatever samples you have, this is something that will probably require some hands-on assistance uh, from the staff, so it, it needs to be coordinated with us so we can figure out what, what the best way forward is. Um, before, uh, before I actually show you the example, there are some general principles for mounting samples that you should know about. First of all, uh, your samples obviously need to be transparent, but transparency isn't magical. So um, what that means is the more light moves through your sample, so the farther light goes through your sample, either on its way in or on its way out, um, the worse the images will look. Remember that the way this is going to be placed into the, um, into the microscope is sort of in this configuration. So again, if I put this in here, the sample will be in the middle of this and the light sheets will come from the right or from the left. And so one of the things that you should do is put whatever part of your sample has the smallest dimension in along the x-axis. So if your sample is like this, you don't want to put it this way, you want to put it this way. The reason being that then light doesn't have to traverse as long a distance uh, to get through it, okay? Uh, in addition, uh, if your sample has one side that you care about more, you should put that side towards the right because we typically image with the right light sheet, so that means the right light sheet will have to traverse a smaller distance to get to the things that you are interested in. Um, in addition, if you have parts of the sample that you care more about others, you should try to put the parts that you care about towards the top. So when you look at this, you can see you'll put the sample in there. Some part will be pointing up, some part will be pointing down. Try to put the thing that you care about pointing up, so that way, so towards the objective, so that when the light goes in, excites and then disperses from there, the distance it needs to go, so the, 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 the emitted fluorescence phot photons need to traverse a, a smaller distance to get from there to the objective. There's another limitation, which is 
the working distance of the objective. So the objective can't see as deep as you want into anything. Its working distance is uh, around, so the effective working distance is around 5.2 millimeters, which is about the height of these posts. So you don't want something that kind of goes way above those posts because that will make it very difficult or impossible to image. Okay, so you, in at least one of the dimensions, the sample should be trimmed to about five millimeters. If not, we have some tricks that we can do on the system that involve swapping some of the optics, but again, that's a custom application that you should let us know about um, so we can discuss it, and it also comes at a cost of quality. Um, so those are some of the constraints. So you can see this is a, you know, there's a lot of constraints. There's a little bit of a, kind of an artisanal aspect to it. Uh, I've given you an overview. Now let me show you with a particular sample uh, how to mount that sample so that you can get an idea uh, of how this all works in practice. Okay, so let me show you how to mount uh, one set of samples. These are courtesy of Amanda Ziegler um, and their uh, pig intestine. So she has her samples in these tubes and you can see that it's actually very hard to see a sample. You might not actually be able to see it at all. And that's because they're very transparent. Um, so it's, it's a good sample to test. Usually uh, things are held in tubes like this or bigger tubes, or even some people have their samples in these. It's a good idea to have this filled up all the way to the top to avoid oxidation. Um, all right, so, uh, which is not the case with this tube because uh, I just removed some of the DB uh, from it to make it maybe easier to see inside. All right, so uh, let me put this in the hood and let's see if we can mount the sample. So the way I typically proceed is I have this, and I open the tube. If it is big enough for me to insert the forceps, I try and fish the sample out very gently. If it's not, which is the case here, I spill it out there. And then I try to gently tap the sample out if it's still adhered to the inside. Okay, so this one's a little bit tricky to get out, so let me see if I can fish it out very gently. There we go, let's see. Okay, this one's gonna be a little bit trickier than I would like. There we go. There we go. Very gently removing the sample from inside. Samples that have been cleared with the iDisco Plus method, uh, are fairly rigid and they look like a transparent jelly but they're harder and they're slightly yellowish. So this sample is roughly rectangular which is uh, why I picked it. It's a bit uh, it's a bit thin so this is going to be a little bit of a challenge to, to fit maybe. Uh, but the idea is you can see or if you can't just trust me this sample is like a little rectangle that's kind of thin um, so, you know, as far as how to mount this, it really depends on, you know, on what, uh, the, you know, the person who's looking at the sample cares about the most to see how we navigate those various constraints. I'm going to do my best to, to sort of mount it uh, in a way that will give us good images, which I think is going to be in this orientation, like that in the holder. Uh, so let me see if I can do that. I'm going to grab... This holder here. I'm going to try first with this one. So with samples like these, sometimes it's easier to just stand them on their side. And so you can see I've sort of taken advantage of the fact that this is a rectangular sample and stood it on its side. And now I'm going to screw it in from the side if I can. So because this sample is so thin, it's actually going to be a challenge to use this one. Uh, so I'm going to instead use a different holder, which I think will be better suited for this sample. So I'm going to use this one, which you can see has a hole. Uh, and I'm going to take advantage of, of this pedestal to make it easier for me to 
secure it. So I'm going to put the sample here. So there it's sort of sitting in a place where I, I can likely spear it from the side with the screw. I'm going to use these two fingers to gently hold the sample while with my other hand I try and spear it from the side to secure it. Almost there. So you can see, hopefully, that the sample is held from the side. So let me see if I can put this. You can see there how I've managed to secure it. So this is on the sort of challenging side of samples. If you have more massive samples that are sort of thicker, they're much easier to mount. You can just put them on something like this and there won't be much of a problem. But this is a particularly good sample for imaging, so that's why I wanted to use this one. So now I'm going to place it here. And so I go in from the bottom, but you can go in from the top. It doesn't really matter. It depends a lot on sort of your manual dexterity as well as the kind of length and size of your, of your, the length of your fingers and the size of your hand, what you find more comfortable. So I'm just going to place this here very gently. You can see that it's aligned, so this screw is aligned with this, one, sort of anti-parallel, that's the way I want them. Now I'm going to secure it by screwing this in a little bit. And then I want to make sure that this is not going to fall out in the reservoir, so I'm going to flip this over. I don't need to shake it, but just to make sure that that's securely in place. So that looks good, so now we're ready to place this into the microscope. We now need to put this inside the microscope, and we're going to want to put it in that orientation. So let's go over to the microscope. So we want to lower it with it forming a 45 degree angle, which is what I'm going to do now. Just very gently lower it, make sure I didn't catch any bubbles. And there we go. Hopefully you can see that that's in the reservoir, uh, submerged inside the dibenzyl ether. So we've now done the following steps. We've mounted the sample in the correctly sized mat sample holder, that's step eight. We've inserted the holder into the sample cradle, that's step nine. And we've placed the cradle into position such that the sample is oriented perpendicular to the light path. So we're ready to go. The next step is to remove our gloves. My gloves are off. What's the next step? We're on step 12. We want to tighten the hex screw on the right side of the gray stage plate. So we want to grab the hex key over here, insert it, and rotate it. Until it's tight. We don't need to over tighten it just until there's some resistance and that's enough. Step 13 is to rotate the objective into the working position. So again, this is the objective. We can go either way, and we want to rotate it until it's in the working position, meaning it's right above the reservoir. Set the correction collar to the appropriate position, 3.5. So the correction collar is this right here, and if you hold the objective and rotate the bottom, you can change the position. The position we want it to be in is 3.5, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 3.5. Three if you forget what the proper position is, it is written down both here on step 14, and there's also a reference picture here. Okay, so uh, that's step 14. So let's see what's the last step. So the last step for mounting the first sample Step 15 says, check that the second light from the right on the joystick is off. If it is on, press this light to restore control of the stage to the joystick. So let's go to the joystick. So what's this business about the lights? So there are four lights. These two don't do anything. These two are important. This one is on if the computer is controlling the microscope. If it is off, then if we move any of these knobs, we will control the stage. This refers to the speed. These lights are also buttons, so if I press this, for example, 
the light turns on and now the um, the microscope can be controlled from the computer. If this is off, it can be controlled from here. And so we want it off because we want to start in a situation where we can control it manually. Speed refers to when I move one of these knobs, how much does that move? So for example, uh, if I turn this, how much does the stage move? So right now it doesn't seem to be moving a lot. If we press this, you can see it blinks more slowly. That means that turns here make even more subtle movements of the stage over there in the Y dimension, meaning sort of in this dimension. Now if we press and hold this until it beeps, now you can see it's blinking very quickly. So now if I turn this, there's actually significant movement on the stage. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I think you can. Okay, so uh, if we then want to go back to another speed, if we just press once, we don't need to press and hold, it goes to medium, and then to slow, all right? So the axes over which the microscope operates are in this microscope, this over here is the Y dimension, this is the X dimension, and Z is this way.